worship space. It'll be there the next three weeks. So if you'd like to make a donation, um, have spare cash, can put it in. That would be great, and we'll forward it to Lutheran Disaster Relief. Uh, there's also a sign-up sheet out there on the bulletin table. Uh, Jerry, Lock, uh, Jerry Wyan uh, called me yesterday. He had been in the hospital for four days with COVID. So he's feeling much better now, but he's in isolation uh, until Wednesday and asked if we could help with some meals. So if you're able to do a, a meal for them, sign your name and what day you're able to take your meal. Um, at this point, we're not looking for menus or what you're planning to, to prepare. Um, and if you need help getting the food to uh, Jerry and Steve, let me know and, and we can help with that. So thank you in advance for supporting uh, Jerry, who for 10 years fed us every, every Wednesday night for 10 years. Uh, with those announcements, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the prelude. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, 
We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are, for, you are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Our first reading is from Isaiah, the 56th chapter. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath 
and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant, these will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called the house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. The word of the Lord. Our second reading is from Romans, the 11th chapter. Paul writes, I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means, I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their very disobedience. So they have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. When the disciples approached, then the disciples approached him and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. And this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from the region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And Jesus answered her, Woman, Great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, in communion with the Holy Spirit. Amen. As you now no doubt know, four-year-old Frederick and 14-month-old Hazel. They are as different as night is from day. Hazel is fearless, and she wants to do everything she sees her older brother doing. 
She is, if nothing else, persistent. A couple weeks ago, Juliana sent us a video. Hazel, once again, was trying to climb up into the recliner. Up to that point, she was just too small to get enough of her body up to pull herself into the chair. But she started trying again. And this time, she was able to get her leg high enough onto the recliner that she could pull herself into the chair. And she turned around, and what a look of joy. Sheer joy and satisfaction that she had done it. My daughter and son-in-law will have their hands full with Hazel. Because of nothing else, she is persistent. Persistence. One of the themes, at least in the second part of the Gospel reading for today. The, the text begins with Jesus talking about clean and unclean. And it's in response to the Pharisees who complain about how Jesus' disciples don't wash their hands appropriately. Well, this day and age, we all understand about the importance of washing hands, but that wasn't the reason the Pharisees were concerned. It wasn't the, that they weren't washing to make their hands clean. They weren't washing them ritually appropriately. There's a certain way you have to do that to be faithful. It has nothing to do with dirt. It has everything to do with following the rules. And when Jesus responds, he ticks them off. But it doesn't matter. He tells the truth. Now, the disciples don't get it. We would expect the disciples to get it, but we know the disciples well enough to know at this point. They don't get it. Unfortunately, they're like us. Or we're like them, however you want to look at it. But there are people in the gospel stories that do get it. And we ought to be surprised that they do. Jesus deliberately goes to a Gentile area, Tyre and Sidon. Guess who he's going to run into? No, he's going to run into Gentiles. In this case, Canaanites. There isn't a race that the Hebrew people hated more than the Canaanites, and vice versa. We're not told where Jesus is going, but this woman comes out. Now, she knows the culture. She knows she shouldn't talk to Jesus. She's a woman, he's a man, and they're in public. No! Worse yet, she's Canaanite, he's Hebrew. But she's like Hazel, persistent. She has nothing to lose. Nothing. She can risk it all. Because from where her position is, there's no way to go but up. Notice how she addresses Jesus. Lord, son of David. Royal approach. Recognizes him as king. She explains her daughter is possessed. Notice Jesus' response. There isn't one. He ignores her. What? He ignores her. But that's appropriate in that culture, in that time. She's not surprised that he ignores her. But keep in mind, she's Persistent. Oh, you're catching on good. She's persistent. And she goes up to Jesus. I mean, for, forget all the, the mores and, and the customs of the day. I, I don't care about those. My daughter needs help. Takes a position of humility before Jesus. Help me. And notice Jesus responds. Ouch. It's not fair to take the children's bread and throw it to the... You dogs! I don't care how you cut it. That's not a compliment. <clears throat> she doesn't flinch. 
She agrees. That's a good way to, to, to um, diffuse a situation. You're right. I'm a dog. You ever see what happens when children, little kids like Hazel, eat lunch? If you ain't got a dog, you're cleaning up that mess. You got a dog? There's no mess. Yes, Lord. But even the dogs clean up the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Children can't eat without making a mess. Children of all ages can't, I've seen you, can't eat without making a mess. I just, she's a persistent, I just need those little crumbs that you would overlook that you'd let the dogs eat. That's all I need. Unlike Peter, who gets out of the boat to walk with Jesus, isn't out there very long before he's sinking. This woman is persistent. Great is your faith, Jesus says. Let it be as you want. Persistence. The scriptures remind us we are to be persistent in prayer. That doesn't mean God's always going to answer our prayers the way we think he should, but he will give us what we want, which is himself. Hazel was so pleased to get up on that chair. And what was more important was mommy and daddy were watching. When we go about our daily lives, God our Father is watching. Be persistent in prayer. A couple weeks ago, I referred to a book. I got the name wrong. I think I called him Ryan Reed. It's Ryan Leak. The book's entitled Chasing Failure. See, we learn more from falling short than we do from succeeding. Now that Hazel can climb up into that chair, she'll move on to some other channel. But as we get older, we discover that we'll try something once, maybe twice, and if we can't do it, we give up. Perhaps we ought not give up so easily to be persistent in prayer and persistent in our prayer life because we may not get what we want, but we'll get what we need, which is Jesus. Thanks be to God.
Creed, let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the Church, those in need, and all of creation. O God, your Spirit gathers the Church. Shepherd those who are newly baptized and newly ordained in the proclamation of the Gospel. Breathe life into ecumenical and interreligious endeavors, and support missionaries throughout the globe. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You created the earth and all its inhabitants, and declared it good. Clean polluted skies, seas, and soil, provide nourishment to plants and animals, and make us aware of our impact on the environment. Hear us, O God. You call leaders to bridge differences and practice generosity. Inspire all in authority to protect people in harm's way. Deliver those in bondage. Support fair elections. Provide care for military personnel and veterans. And show mercy to those for whom they have responsibility. Hear us, O God. You provide for those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Embrace people who have been rejected because of difference. Heal trauma caused by racism and prejudice. Shield any who are persecuted. Console the dying and heal the sick. Especially Jerry, Dee, Linda, Brenda, Barb, Jean, John, Elaine, Rita, Katie, Tom, Brian, Forrest, Paul, Keith, Rich, Patrick, Patricia, Jenna, Roseanne, Marianne, John, Jeff, Jonathan, Debbie, and those we name now aloud or in our hearts. Hear us, O God. O God, you journey with us in all of life's transitions. Guide those preparing for baptism, marriage, and retirement. Guide our church council and committees in, in their visioning and ministry, especially in the months ahead. Safeguard those who travel. Hear us, O God. We give you thanks for those who now rest from their labors, especially Bernard of Clairvaux, whom the church commemorates today, Jane Weller, and all our loved ones who rest now in you. Motivate us by their lives of dedication to the gospel until that day when we join with them in our eternal home. Hear us, O God. In your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself. Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please be seated. Take and eat. This is my body given for you. 
Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ is God, Christ is risen, Christ is the Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And I the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All people are called to Christ's table. Come, eat what is good. Thanks Thank be to God. God. Let us not be at the table of our Lord. As, we come, as you come forward together around the table, please pick up a glass from the tray on your left. It is in the empty tray for you glasses. Let us gather for the feast.
creation, please stand. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his love and grace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, thank you generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your hand and table. Send us now to spread your generosity in the whole world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Lizzie, would you come here, please? This is Lizzie's last Sunday with us, and she's been part of the video team. So they asked that we send her off with a blessing. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. You made the whole earth for your glory. All creation praises you. We lift our voices to join the songs of heaven and earth, of things seen and unseen. You stretched out the heavens like a curtain. You divided the day from night. You appointed times and seasons for work and rest, for tearing down and building up. You blessed your people through all generations and guided them in life and death. Abraham and Sarah, Moses and Miriam, Isaiah and all the prophets, Mary, mother of our Lord, Peter, James and John and all the apostles, and all the saints and witnesses in your church of ages past, in whom your spirit spoke and moved. Be with us now as we ask your blessing upon Elizabeth. As we send her off to college, we send her off into your glory and praise. Grant all of us faith to know your gracious purpose in all things. Give us all joy in them and lead us to the building up of your kingdom. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest sea, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen.
harvest. Thank you. 